tu es Petrus, et sopran Petram edificabo ecclesia mia. Venerati fratelli, cari fratelli e sorelle, con queste parole il canto d'ingresso ci ha introdotto nel solenne e successivo rito del consistore ordinario pubblico per la creazione di... Tu es Petrus et super hanc Petram edificabo ecclesia mea. Venerable brothers, dear brothers and sisters, with these words the entrance hymn has led us into the solemn and evocative ritual of the ordinary public consistory for the creation of new cardinals, with the placing of the beretta, the handing over of the ring, and the assigning of a titular church. They are the efficacious words with which Jesus constituted Peter as the solid foundation of the church. On such a foundation, the faith represents the qualitative factor. Simon becomes Peter the rock inasmuch as he professed his faith in Jesus as Messiah and Son of God. In the proclamation of Christ, the church is bound to Peter, and Peter is placed in the church as a rock. Although it is Christ himself who builds up the church, Peter must always be a constitutive element of that upbuilding. He will always be such through faithfulness to his confession made at Caesarea Philippi. In virtue of the affirmation, you are the Christ the Son of the Living God. The words Jesus addressed to Peter highlight well the ecclesial character of today's event. The new cardinals in receiving the title of a church in this city or of a suburban diocese are fully inserted in the Church of Rome, led by the successor of Peter, in order to cooperate closely with him in governing the Universal Church. These beloved brothers, who in a few minutes' time will enter and become part of the College of Cardinals, will be united with new and stronger bonds, not only to the Roman Pontiff, but also to the entire community of the faithful spread throughout the world. In carrying out their particular service in support of the Petrine ministry, the new cardinals will be called to consider and evaluate the events, the problems, and the pastoral criteria which concern the mission of the entire church. In this delicate task, the life and the death of the Prince of the Apostles, who for love of Christ gave himself even unto the ultimate sacrifice, will be an example and a helpful witness of faith for the new cardinals. E con questo significato che da intendere anche l'imposizione della beretta rossa. Ai nuovi cardinali è affidato il servizio dell'amore. Amore per Dio. It is with this meaning that the placing of the red beretta is also to be understood. The new cardinals are entrusted with the service of love. Love for God, love for his church, an absolute and unconditional love for his brothers and sisters, even unto shedding their blood if necessary, as expressed in the words of placing the Beretta and is indicated by the color of their robes. Furthermore, they are asked to serve the church with love and vigor, with transparency and the wisdom of teachers, with the energy and strength of shepherds, with the fidelity and courage of martyrs. They are to be eminent servants of the church that finds in Peter the visible foundation of unity. In the gospel we have just heard proclaimed, there is offered a model to imitate and to follow. Against the background of the third prediction of the Passion, 
death and resurrection of the Son of Man, and in profound contrast to it is placed the scene of the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, who are still pursuing dreams of glory beside Jesus. They ask him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. The response of Jesus is striking, and he asks an unexpected question. You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? The illusion is crystal clear. The chalice is that of the passion which Jesus accepts as the will of God. Serving God and others, self-giving, this is the logic which authentic faith imparts and develops in our daily lives and which is not the type of power and glory which belongs to the world. By their request, James and John demonstrate that they do not understand the logic of the life to which Jesus witnesses, that logic which, according to the Master, must characterize the disciple in his spirit and in his actions. The erroneous logic is not the sole preserve of the two sons of Zebedee, because, as the evangelist narrates, it also spreads to the other ten apostles who began to be indignant at James and John. They were indignant because it is not easy to enter into the logic of the gospel and to let go of power and glory. St. John Chrysostom affirms that all of the apostles were imperfect, whether it was the two who wished to lift themselves above the other ten, or whether it was the ten who were jealous of them. Commenting on the parallel passages in the Gospel of Luke, St. Cyril of Alexandria adds, the disciples had fallen into human weakness and were discussing among themselves which one would be the leader and superior to the others. This happened and is recounted for our advantage. What happened to the holy apostles can be understood by us as an incentive to humility. A formare come un corpo unico e indivisibile con lui. This episode gives Jesus a way to address each of the disciples and to call them unto himself, almost to pull them in, to form them into one indivisible body with him, and to indicate which is the path to real glory, that of God. You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great amongst you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. In ogni luogo, non c'è alcun dubbio sulla strada scelta da Gesù. Egli non si limita. Dominion and service, egoism and altruism, possession and gift, self-interest and gratuitousness, these profoundly contrasting approaches confront each other in every age and place. There is no doubt about the path chosen by Jesus. He does not merely indicate it with words to the disciples of then and of today, but he lives it in his own flesh. He explains, in fact, for the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. These words shed light upon today's public consistory with a particular intensity. They resound in the depth of the soul and represent an invitation and a reminder, a commission 
and an encouragement especially for you, dear and venerable brothers who are about to be enrolled in the College of Cardinals. Gesù interpreta la sua missione sulla terra sovrapponendo alla figura del figlio dell'uomo quella del servo sofferente. According to biblical tradition, in the book of Daniel specifically, the Son of Man is the one who receives power and dominion from God. Jesus interprets his mission on earth by combining the figure of the Son of Man with that of the suffering servant described in Isaiah. He receives power and the glory only in as much as he is servant, but he is servant in as much as he welcomes within himself the suffering, the fate of the suffering and the sin of all humanity. His servants is realized in total faithfulness and complete responsibility towards mankind. In this way, the free acceptance of his violent death becomes the price of freedom for many. It becomes the beginning and the foundation of the redemption of each person and of the entire human race. Dear brothers who are to be enrolled in the College of Cardinals, may Christ's total gift of self on the cross be for you the foundation, the stimulus, and strength of a faith operative in charity. May your mission in the Church and the world always be in Christ alone, responding to His logic and not that of the world. And may it be illumined by faith and animated by charity, which comes to us from the glorious cross of the Lord. On the ring which I will soon place on your finger are represented Saints Peter and Paul, and in the middle a star which evokes the Mother of God. Wearing this ring, you are reminded each day to remember the witness to which these two apostles gave to Christ even unto martyrdom here in Rome, their blood making the church fruitful. The example of the Virgin Mother will always be for you an invitation to follow her who was strong in faith and a humble servant of the Lord. Concludendo questa breve riflessione, vorrei rivolgere il mio cordiale saluto e ringraziamento a tutti voi presenti, in particolare as I bring these brief reflections to a close, I would like to extend warm greetings and thanks to all present, especially to the official delegations from various countries and the various diocesan groups. The new cardinals in their service are called to remain faithful to Christ at all times, letting themselves be guided only by his gospel. Possa rispecchiarsi al vivo il nostro unico pastore maestro, il Signore Gesù, fonte di ogni sapienza, che indica la strada a tutti. Dear brothers and sisters, pray that their lives will always reflect the Lord Jesus, our sole shepherd and teacher, source of every hope, who points out the path to everyone. And pray also for me that I may continually offer to the people of God. the witness of sound doctrine and guide Holy Church with a firm and humble hand.